A very good evening and welcome to the second episode of our new show on The Record. My name is Vuyam Vogo and I'm your host. Well, it's a Tuesday and in terms of how we are going to run things on this program, Tuesdays are about the South African body politic. And this being the first Tuesday of the show, we felt let's get the leading parties to talk about an issue they should well, generally speaking, that is, be united around. And that's a common agenda for the advancement and empowerment of South African women. Remember, we do want you to weigh in wherever you might be watching this program from. Our Twitter handle is um, OTR underscore 404. An early morning scuffle that led to four security guards and more than 20 students injured. The incident took place in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Students who slept in the Senate Hall overnight were forcefully removed by security. You know, it was not a nice scene. They threw us out of Solomon Matlangu house. And we had thought, okay, after that, things are okay. I have no idea what provoked them to come after us, but they did from Solomon Matlangu house to the main where we currently are. They continuously tried to hurt us in trying to get us to the space. Third year engineering student Hepira Zirani was kicked and punched by private security guards hired by management. He sustained injuries to his back and shoulder. He was being violent. I, was, I said, what are you doing? Why? For what? And then he just took me from by my shoulder, threw me down the stairs. By the time when I was saying to him, hey, I'm harmless, I have nothing. I can't harm you, I have nothing. I'm a student. I even took out like my pockets and showed him that I only have two reins and my keys. Vets management denies the allegations. Um, we have seen those uh, allegations on social media. We are reviewing the footage and the coverage um, of this morning's incidents. As a result of the ongoing tensions on campus, walk-in registrations for this week have been cancelled. Only online or telephonic registrations will be processed until the situation is resolved. If we have any hope of getting the registration process um, going again tomorrow morning and face-to-face -face registration, um, then it was essential for us to clear the area. The Department of Higher Education has contributed an additional 6.9 billion rand for the university's 2016 financial year on top of the 10 billion rand already allocated. And as far as says, it's still waiting for the funds. The 6.9 billion that the minister spoke about yesterday, 2.3 billion of it will go directly to the universities, not via NESFAS. It's going to pay the universities or compensate the universities for the fact that they are not going to increase fees this year. Security on UJ campuses has already been heightened. No walk-in registrations are allowed and everything is done online. Students who cannot do so can contact the university's call center for assistance. UJ has received about 92,000 applications for the 2016 intake. It can only accommodate 10,000 first-year students. A late application system opened uh, last week already. We anticipate that we will close uh, the late application system uh, tonight at midnight just because of the sheer number of late applications that we have had. Students at both UJ and VAS have vowed to make the institutions ungovernable until their demands are met. Margaret Amatabe, SABC News, Johannesburg. Well, the first, of course, of the stories we are tracking for you today, and those are the stories around uh, the situation at various universities across uh, the country, that, of course, being VETS University. Well, at UNISA, employees were injured after a standoff with Pretoria, with police in Pretoria. This after they forced non-striking employees to vacate their offices and join their unprotected protest action. UNISA management is threatening to take action against the striking employees. A campaign to be employed permanently. Support staff, among them security guards, cleaners and gardeners at TUT, University of Pretoria and UNISA, say they are tired of being exploited by labor brokers. I'm working at UNISA for 29 years this year. I'm on the strike now because we want to be a permanent at UNISA and then we want to earn and more money and more pay because now I'm earning 2,500 a month. The striking UNISA staff and students were later joined by students from TUT in a march to the University of Pretoria. 
As they pushed their way onto the premises, police opened fire with rubber bullets. UNISA management says plans are afoot to absorb the support staff. We remain committed as a university to also see through the process of insourcing all of the staff members. Anybody who says that there has not been movement on the, on the part of the university is really being economical with the truth. UNISA management also warned that steps will be taken against those on strike. Offense Estimo, SABC News, Pretoria. Well, to Port Elizabeth now, where prospective students at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University queued for a third day as the registration process is in full swing. The registration process at the NMMU opened on Friday last week. Walk-in applications, reapplications, and those who want to change their desired study course are hoping to succeed. Most of the late applicants say they held back to register as they were unsure of what their metric final results would be. I've been here since last week Friday. Came here on Friday morning. Um, I didn't get positive feedback. Came here yesterday and it was really full yesterday. It was ridiculously full. But um, I got help. Um, but not really positive feedback. I'm here again today. Um, I'm getting a bit of positive feedback, but I'm still waiting. I came from King. I got into engineering on Friday, and now I'm just looking for a place to stay. The number of applicants at the Nelson Mandela University have doubled this year. The institution aims to facilitate all applicants who qualify. We've had more than 60,000 applications. This time last year we had about 36,000 applications, so it's almost an, more than an 80% increase. This is um, because of our free online applications. It's all part of the university's drive to try and widen our access um, to students who might not otherwise have been able to come to university. Um, the SRC is running a campaign called Sakingomso, meaning building the future. Uh, we are back here by the 30th of December already to plan for this process. What we have done is to train activists. We have more than 70 people helping, assisting students um, with the walk-in period. The university is also assisting indigenous students with their registration fees. The SRC says more than 400 poor students have benefited from this. If we're Porti, SABC News, Port Elizabeth. All well, time now to take a quick ad break and when we return, our debate for this evening. Get all the latest news from the SABC's online news services on our website. Breaking news and in-depth coverage of everything from business, sports to politics and lifestyle. Catch the top news clips and watch live streaming of major news events on the SABC News YouTube channel whenever. Stay connected on the SABC News Facebook page and have your say on news that matters to you. And for the latest headlines and live updates from our reporters, follow us on Twitter. SABC Digital News, anytime, anywhere. Morning Live sets the agenda for the day. We bring you the latest local and international news. We are on the ball with all your sports activities and results. We give you the latest business update. We bring you the latest weather every time. Watch Morning Live every weekday morning at 6 o'clock, bringing you everything you need to know before you go. Shab Shab, eight ten nine. Looking for social issues? It is not our intention to give condoms to 10-year-old children. Okay. We are here to assist you. Looking for religious issues? The point is uh, not for the church to try and prove whether this is the fact. So we want accountability. Is there a system of governance in your churches? Political issues? 
Barack Obama said Africa should stop looking to the outside for salvation and focus on someone else being at fault for the problems of the continent. Economic issues. The young mothers, uh, single mothers, that's buying property now. Or just looking to air your views. Yeah, some of your views on social media. Look no further, as Newsroom has all the informative information you need. Weekdays at 9 a.m. only on the SABC News Channel. Time now to get onto our conversation for this evening. A common agenda for the advancement and empowerment of South African women. Well, let me introduce you to our panel. To my right is Mandy Samashiko, who represents the Economic Freedom Fridays. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. And of course, next to her is Marupini Ramukhopa, who is from the Youth Desk of the ANC Women's League. Welcome to you too. Thank you. And we also have, um, of course, Rafil Nzeche, who is from the Democratic Alliance. Welcome to, for, uh, to you, uh, ma'am, as well. Thank you, and good evening to your listeners. Well, uh, ladies, I'm going to start with a very general, if not frivolous even, um, um, you know, question. Um, to say 22 years into democracy, are South African women better or worse? Definitely worse for black, specifically African women, because of the obvious fact of the gender, race, and class discrimination, which under the new democratic dispensation, unfortunately, um, because of lack of proper reparations, has worsened the case for African females, um, as evidenced by the huge gaps in um, you know, the ability to be able to cope with the cost of living, which is basically dubbed as inequality. I would say definitely better. I think um, the progress that have uh, uh, that are, is in place currently is evident. I do not understand why others would actually think that uh, we are worse off. In the past, you wouldn't have us sitting here as women, first of all, talking about ourselves, our aspirations, and also checking if um, there has been improvement about our standard of living. So I do believe that there are systems in place, there are institutions in place, there are um, um, legal matters in place, um, that uh, the government of the ANC have made sure that at least they will speak to the issues that affect women who are black, uh, who are African, who are white. And I do believe that, yes, we have come a long way. Thank you. Hello? I think it's a combination of the two. If you look at where women are today, a lot has changed. I agree with her that more of us are in positions where we would not have been in previous era. But in the same breath, if you look at the fact that today we're sitting with just over 8 million unemployed South Africans and the majority of those is women. So we are worse. I cannot say we are better. And obviously we've got good legislation, but the, as usual, the implementation thereof keeps failing us in a lot of ways because people implement degrees of it, not in totality, to uplift everybody, not just women. Oh. Mandisa, it looks like um, you, you, you uh, if, if, I may, if you were to look at a, use this at a spectrum, you're sort of on the one extreme, <laughs> you know, that says um, we are worse. I mean, she chooses the middle part and you on the other extreme. But, Let's talk about where you differ with fundamentally with um, um, what the ANC believe, it believes is the case. Yes, where we differ is on the basis of the realities of uh, the current day situation. The first acknowledgement as the economic freedom fighters is that we acknowledge the struggles that brought us political freedom. To the extent that we acknowledge even uh, Winnie Mandela, we acknowledge Charlotte McLeide, we acknowledge uh, Oliver Tambo and all the other heroes, Chris Hani, Peter Mugabe. We acknowledge those victories. There's no doubt about that. There must never be confusion about that. This is not a personal battle against the ANC. It is a battle against the capitalist system, which has been, uh, you know, brutal to Africans to the extent that um, it has enslaved 
Africans, especially African women, who find themselves in the forefront of very vicious um, circumstances in the employment environment, domestic workers security guards work in the private sector, um, many other, you know, cleaners, um, petrol attendants. They find themselves in a much, much worse off situation. Yes, definitely unemployment, underemployment has definitely increased. Majority workers, in fact, in excess of 50% of them are earning under 3,000 rand. I'm being generous, under 2,800 rand. You can't celebrate that as a victory. What uh, we believe that the ANC does is that they confuse the victories of political freedom, the right to put a cross on a ballot paper. It's a very meaningless right when you look at it in the current day context um, of basically suffering economic oppression, which you cannot run away from. Why? Because systemically the system has been designed and sustained deliberately so on a neoliberal basis to do what? To say to an African woman, there's a ceiling for you. As I'm speaking, there are women in the corporate environment who are professionals. Let's move away if maybe um, there's a bias towards, uh, a bias rather against discussing the poorest of the poor. Let's look at women who are operating in the BE space, who have uh, small enterprises. Let's look at women who are in the corporate environment. What is their future looking like in that uh, private sector entity? The reason we marched as the EFF to the Chamber of Mines, the Reserve Bank, and the stock exchange is precisely because we understand that the African National Congress-led government is finding itself co-opted in this system and cannot entangle itself out of it, put corruption aside, which makes the situation worse. So what is the picture for women? It is a dire picture. Let's never ever downplay it. You look at the youth unemployment of in excess of 36%, in, for instance, in Gauteng province, and you ask yourself, that was never the case uh, prior to you know, the end of the evil apartheid system. You look at water shortages in Rustenburg. The ANC held a, 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 a rally there or an event there over the weekend, but people didn't have water. Nine people died. How many of those were women? I would guess a big chunk of them. So my issue is that, um, or rather our issue as the EFF is that, you know, you can't hide behind an old success, which you failed to capitalize on, because by the way, you're in charge of the state, you could have easily legislated corrective and reparative policies. Sebastian Babel. First of all, the fact that um, there is an organization called the Economic Freedom Fighters is precisely because <laughs> of the, the, the work that the ANC have done. To begin with, the, the, the concept economic freedom came from the ANC Youth League. It was our clarion call, it still is the clarion call of the ANC Youth League that says that we need economic freedom in our lifetime. So it is not a new thing. It cannot be owned by a specific group. It is something that the ANC have always fought for and it is something that the ANC is implementing. Now, the fact that, again, we are able to talk about percentages of women, whether they are poor or they are in corporate um, 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 level, um, it's precisely because there's something that has been done. That is why we're able to say that let us compare. The issue of unemployment it is a problem, but it is a universal issue. I don't believe that it is something that is only uh, peculiar to South Africa. That is why you will find that in the UN and in other multilateral uh, institutions, we do talk about unemployment specifically for the youth. And we do agree as the ANC Women's League, we do agree as the ANC that indeed we need to fight poverty, we need to fight unemployment, precisely because most of the time the face of poverty always bears the face of a woman. So we are doing something about it. And I do believe that we have done quite a substantial amount of um, uh, um, a work, lack of a better way to say. It may not be enough. It may not be celebrated. I do not expect um, uh, EFF to celebrate it for obvious reasons. However, the truth is the truth. We know why we are here. That is why majority of South Africans have given us this responsibility to continue as a government of the people, democratically so. And we are not going to stop to improve the lives of our people, even if it may not be enough, but we are doing something. We are able to talk about access to water. We are able to talk about access to electricity and sanitation, precisely because things are no longer the way that they were pre uh, the democracy that we're celebrating today. So to suggest that nothing has been 
been done and to suggest that we cannot celebrate the progress done, I do believe that it's disingenuous. We are going to continue to do what the people of South Africa has democratically given us the responsibility to do, irrespective of who says what, because we know why the people of South Africa believe in the ANC. I mean, you are prepared to make some acknowledgments, but uh, you believe that uh, there's a lot that the ANC hasn't been able um, to do. Where, in your view, um, did the ANC government drop the ball? What could it have done a lot better? Well, let's start. Manisa talked about water losses. If you looked at um, Minister Mgonyana and her budget, there was about 300 million that was unspent, which would have eased the impact of the drought that we're facing at the moment if the infrastructure had been maintained. In its own, that is a typical of example of ANC having dropped the ball. We've been looking at the stats that come out of State South Africa. If you look at the fact that we are losing 774 jobs a day in South Africa today, look at who's being impacted by that. Then look at businesses, small businesses particularly, to even get capital just to be a hawk and buy apples on the side of the road it is almost impossible to get started and usually the small businesses especially take rural women women in the townships they are the ones that need that little capital to get them going so that they can provide for their families and those are the things there too much red tape for small businesses to start and to even get funding to get going so those are the things that ANC's actually failed the people they can talk about successes, but 8.9 million job losses to date is not something to be proud of because it's the people at the ground that we see every day that are not able to put food on the table. Ladies, we're going to take a quick break. We will be back right after this. Technology isn't all scary. There's also fun stuff like gaming. Lots of women do play games, whether it's on their phones or their tablets. Then there are Africans who are using new tools to make other people's lives much easier. We typed the whole CV on a small QWERTY Nokia phone. For all these and other technology and social media news, join me, Spumelele Zondi, every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Central African Time on SABC News. Welcome back, and if you've just joined us, you're watching a, a live uh, debate uh, for, for between women from South Africa's leading political parties. We're asking the question, 22 years uh, into democracy, are women better or worse off? Now, I want us, ladies, to just go to some specific examples of incidents and events that yes. have happened um, uh, in, in, the, in the last while. I mean, in February last year, a DAMP was accused of sexually harassing a woman um, who worked for the party. Subsequently, uh, Archibald Figlen was punished by the party and an array of sanctions were put um, um, on him as a, as a DAMP. Last week, the ANC's Western Cape chairperson, Marius Franz Mann, accused of harassing a woman while en route to the party's fourth celebrations. He denies the allegation, and today there was the big meeting where this issue um, was discussed. I want to find out, as women from different political parties, where would you stand on the two issues that I've just mentioned? If, just for a second, you could just forget who you are and where you're coming from and say, as a woman, this is my position on this issue. I can tell what yours will be. <laughs> I'm going to start with these two. You know, I'm, I'm very clear that as women, we need to be united when it comes to incidents of any form of abuse because we know how, how it's almost a pandemic in this country. And at the same time, we need to make sure that the law takes its course, whatever course that law is, because there is a constitution that is brilliant, that needs to work, and it must be implemented properly, and ultimately, we must respect the law, because if we all then go lawlessness and take the law into our own hands, then we're defeating the purpose of having a constitution. Marvin? 
gender struggle remains a struggle of all of us, whether you are in a political party or a church. Um, that's what one thing that affects, if it doesn't affect you, it affects someone that you know. Um, on the cases that you've just spoken about, as much as I have to speak for myself, um, I will speak about what the ANC Women's League has done. We have taken out a statement where we side of the young woman who has laid complaint. However, just like uh, my um, colleague has just said here, we should also allow the process of the law to take its course. Uh, but uh, um, at the current moment, we are doing our best to ensure that the young woman is protected. We are making sure that uh, the law should uh, uh, take its course so that nobody should ever feel that some way, somehow the law has failed them so that we can always abide by the constitution. But uh, before we could uh, enter into any of these legal issues, we take the side of the woman, we will listen to the woman and we'll do our best as women in South Africa who are championing gender struggle to ensure that young women don't find themselves in situations uh, that they are in at the moment. We don't only want to speak about issues when they've already happened, but we also want to make sure that we prevent cases such as this one from happening because they erode the, 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 the fiber of society and we definitely don't want to be associated with anything that has to do with erosion of the fiber of society or oppressing the rights of young women to be themselves and to express themselves and to live freely in South Africa. That's what we fought for. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think before we come to that one, I just need to attend to the issue of uh, who owns the title of economic freedom. That's not the issue. You know, she mentioned it earlier, and we're having a debate. It must come alive. It mustn't be staged. Yes. You, you can't obsess about, I'm owning this title, I started this conversation, I started that. I said right from the outset that we acknowledge the gain of political freedom and it, that's where it ends. Mm -hmm. And then we, there's a new struggle. We're a generation that is caught up in the most massive, massive, massive struggle that we can all ever imagine. Not that we are saying that it will be easier to conquer this one than it was to fight, you know, for just a mere right to place a, a, a cross Can on a thing. But correct. the issue is that... Can I just correct before you continue? You, you, <laughs> once you say that my ideology is this, you must then do things to show intent, that I have every intention to pursue this struggle. And I'm going to pursue it fearlessly, and I'm not going to be ashamed about it, and I'm not going to be afraid of even the biggest capitalism. Let's come back to the question of... Uh, women. Okay, before Ms. before Ms. you do that, can I correct? Actions it is, it speak is, louder than words. It she is says. not. It is not a new struggle. That's where I want to correct her. This is where we don't agree. It is not a new struggle. They may be doing what they are doing in a different way, but this struggle is the struggle that was started by the ANC and it is continuing. Not maybe in the way that they would like it to happen for their own reasons. We are doing it and we are not going to stop either. That's all I wanted okay, to correct. Yeah, yeah, no, look, let's move on. Look, it's, it's very important to understand that 364 years later, you can't be speaking like that. There's a very strong need to be radical even about the issues of women. Misogyny and sexism and chauvinism in this country is completely out of control. I have myself laid charges against a chairperson of a committee in the legislature for sexual harassment. The ANC Youth League to, up to today has said nothing. Instead, there's been subtle threats to intimidate the workers who were, who were witnesses when this thing happened. I don't want to make it about myself because I can tell you the violation and the violence that African women face is actually institutionalized in this country. And the ANC has never ever used their majority to correct that. I'll give you a very practical example. There are evictions in this country, day in, day out, here specifically in this province. Violent evictions, pregnant women, children, elderly females, people living with disability, people on chronic medication, Townhouse complexes, flats, all over the inner city of Johannesburg, Ekurumeni, parts of Sidibane, parts of Twane, parts of West Rand. We are constantly engrossed with those issues as the EFF because communities are in very close contact with ourselves and we actually very proactively go out to stand up for them and try to defend them. But what has the African National Congress done? There are women there. There are children there in the main. In fact, let me tell you, of the statistics of the cases that we have worked on, majority of the victims of uh, evictions and property hijackings, another issue which 
the MEC for community safety in this province has done nothing about, which happens to be an issue that um, affects pr predominantly women, as you would know, most households in this country, in this province, are led by single parents. This issue of evictions, there's never ever been a proactive stance. In fact, let me tell you, the MEC of housing also went out of his way to say there is no housing crisis. Now that means the, li the right to life, the right to education, the right to security, the right to just your freedom of uh, 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 association and your right to actually be able to have a decent life and have dignity has been eroded. What has the ANC done about it? They have exacerbated the problem. Have you? The, the, the obsession about, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem. There seemed to be an obsession about talking about the ANC doing this and not doing that. Uh, maybe my colleague here would have assisted us by following um, uh, what you have asked us. You spoke about two incidences, and I think we've given the position of our parties and ourselves as young women. Now, it, 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 it cannot be correct that the ANC does not care. The ANC have got structures whereby people that has got problems that she has um, um, alluded to, both as an organization and as government, know where to go to. It will always be a problem to try and deal with each issues that uh, come with um, urbanization because you would have many people flooding in, you would have many people not sticking to the agreement um, 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 or the contract um, that was signed when they were given maybe the RDP houses. However, the ANC's government is grappling with that and ensuring that at least they put system in place to deal with situations such as this one. Yes, we have issues that she has raised currently and I do believe that we are doing everything in our power to ensure that as much as we've got the responsibility to our people and we know our responsibility at the same time we maintain the law we do not just allow everything just to happen haphazardly you don't maintain no, okay, the let law, me finish you were, but you, you, don't but you were given law. an opportunity to speak no, let me speak you I will be given give an opportunity no 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 you will be given an opportunity can i speak the law. Uh, my, my colleague yeah, let me speak point. and finish I, I, that's why i'm saying that there seems to be an obsession uh, about talking about the anc and its wrongs so let us respect each other as you were respected as well so that we can speak about our organization it will actually be good for um, EF to tell us what have they done as opposed to just wanting to speak about this that the ANC did not do or this that the ANC did. Let, I'm trying to talk about what I know my organization have done so allow me to do that. As I was saying I said that there are institutions in place both in the branches and in government at the same time and I've also uh, tried to explain that as much as we do understand the, 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 the contradictions that come with urbanization and us having a responsibility to look after our own people through our ward councillors, through our municipalities, through our, our, our street committees that are in the ANC and the, the, the BECs. We are also acknowledging that indeed a lot still have to be done and we have to also make sure that as much as we are doing what we have planned, we must also plan to make sure that when people come up with things that we did not, we did not plan or we did not put in our IDPs in order to make sure that we maintain lawlessness because we are the state. We have to run uh, 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 communities. We cannot just uh, get excited and say that this is happening and we want to be uh, laughed by people, therefore we'll just allow it. We must make sure that at the same time as we are saving our people, we also maintain the law. That's what I was trying to say. Brafila, do you want to take up uh, Marupini's challenge and perhaps kick off that conversation about what each and every one of us can do and for a second, just forgetting about what the ANC is or isn't okay. doing? I think let's talk about the housing issue because it, it, it does affect women. And one of the things we've been calling for particularly is to say, can we have the lists for RDP houses publicized? So if somebody asks, what number am I on the housing list? They know exactly where they are and when they're due to receive a house. That has never happened since the RDP Pro has been, project has been implemented. And obviously, one of the things that you see constantly is the corruption that comes out of these houses. If I give you an aside, a particular example, when I used to be a councillor in Binoni, there was an allocation that was supposed to have been done for the disabled, for the elderly, prioritized. But when the allocation actually went ahead, 
it was not the people that were supposed to have been re receiving those houses. And we're, as we're told, no, these other people are being prioritized beforehand. But how that came about, that's not even open to discussion. It's one of those things that happens behind closed doors. Nobody knows how those decisions are made. So I think one of the first things that needs to be done by government, open up the, R the RDP list so people know exactly where they are. We actually call on the NC and say, open up those housing lists. I think it's the most I crucial thing because a dignity is restored by people owning their title deeds. That's another thing. When people are allocated houses, they must get a, not a happy letter, but a title deed so they can feel they own the land and the house that they're residing in. That hasn't happened to date. It is such a slow process. And I'm talking having been a ward councillor. I was I'd a ward councillor myself in like my time. I think and I'd like can to I just finish? I was a ward councillor myself we in my think time. We need to and allow to one of the things that I, I, I agree with you is that we need to put systems in place and controls to ensure that uh, there is transparency and control that uh, we don't have to face corruption as you are alluding to. And I think the ANC have agreed that indeed there is corruption and we have to deal with it. But one of the things that I wanted to raise was that I was a ward councillor myself in a very small municipality in the Northern Cape. And one of the things that I think I would always pride myself in, in being a member of the ANC, is seeing older women and families who have stayed in um, the houses that um, they got in apartheid era and they didn't have title deeds. Once we gave them and registered them to have title deeds, ex I agree with you, you could see the pride that they have. Okay. So it means that indeed there is a challenge um, somewhere, somehow in the system that we have put in place. The system needs to be improved when challenges come so that we can be able to make sure that we serve our people properly. And I am happy that um, um, uh, my colleague here doesn't only speak about a problem, but she also said this is how we suggest that we can resolve it. And I think this is how we are supposed to have an opposition that not only complains, but also um, 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 speak to issues that they were elected for. Not only just to sit and say that is wrong, that is wrong. Also come up with solutions such as this one. And I think we should appreciate it and we should find a way and work together in ensuring that at least we do make sure that people are served properly. But you do, you do realize that it's not just about you. Uh, because you may decide that it's not an issue you want to take up perhaps as forcefully uh, and as vocally as you should. But take what happened in Marigana a couple of days ago. Right? The Minister of Housing, the Minister in the Presidency, uh, Deputy President um, of country go to Marigana, they hand over houses. Mm -hmm. right? Now the people, the residents, the, including the workers from the mines, do not believe that the process was uh, open and transparent and fair. Right? They raise issue. They get chased away. What then happens is that they go there by night and they intimidate the grannies who got the houses. In other words, the implications for the way things have been done go way beyond okay. yourselves uh, as a party. No, no, no definitely because um, 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 the ANC, for example, is not just an institution out there in a building. It is a, an organization of the people. This is the reason that the ANC is still alive after 104 years. Um, we are now 22 years in power. We are trying our best to make sure that we deliver the services to the people based on what they raise. Um, there is a system in place that speaks to housing allocations, but at, uh, at specific times there will be special projects that are put in place to ensure that we speak to uh, 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 interventions that need to be put in place for a specific reason. But I do believe that if the community raises issues, the ward councillors and the leadership of the ANC in that specific area and government as a whole need to listen and make sure that whatever it is that we do will not only make people happy, but we will be in line with the aspirations of the communities that elected us to serve them. Mm -hmm. You know, th th we've been going on and on about, uh, you know, a, a brochure information about the ANC. Members of society are citizens in this country, or rather citizens are members of society. So are we. <laughs> they are not uh, members of the ANC necessarily, yes. or members of the EFF necessarily, or members of the DA, or they happen to be. But once you come into government, your duty is to make sure that what the constitution says, what the laws say you implement. For instance, let's stick to the topic of women. I'm the one who raised the issue on evictions and how it impacts women. We know it live. We can give you examples 
from here until Cairo about evictions where elderly women, children, disabled women, and women who are working and have nowhere to leave their kids in Hanitu, there were evictions, there were little kids there whose parents were at work and were very confused by the situation. We called the, the, the MEC for community safety. I'm just giving you a practical example. Let's talk about the clinics. In clinics, primary health care so-called, women are heavily dependent on the clinics to function um, optimally and to do their best to give service to women, especially women who are pregnant and women who have all sorts of other sort of feminist or maternal issues. What does the ANC government do? We are not going to stop criticizing the ANC government, no, by the way. Be. We are not going to stop pointing out their weaknesses. We, we have shouldn't. very strong and cogent policies that we have continuously put forward. We are mobilizing society. If anyone wants to know what the EFF is doing, we are mobilizing society. We mobilized domestic workers in the silence and the deafening silence of um, campaigns that are basically nothing but PR exercises during August month last year to say what? That when the EFF comes into government, we are going to legislate minimum wages. We're not going to go to Nedlec and discuss it there. Why am I raising this? Because I've mentioned it right in the beginning. The, 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 the crippling uh, legacy of discriminatory practices, policies in this country, or a discriminatory economy for that matter, racialized economy, that discriminates against all of us on the basis of gender, race, and class, is much, much more brutal on women. It's not going to go away because you have warm and fuzzy things that you say, we've got branches, come to our branches. We need to go out to communities, especially as women leaders. We need to go out and look for those communities that are that are, you know, not just disgruntled, but that are re basically facing the cold face of, of this violent capitalist system that we're living under. There is no ways that we are going to shove under the carpet the fact that repeatedly, during evictions, for instance, in Gauteng, we speak shack fires is another very critical thing. We go in on our own with no resources whatsoever and we ask for communities to assist us to help in instances of shack fires. We've da we do it. Basically, informal settlements now in, in, in Gauteng think that EFF has got a budget for shack fires. They are under that impression. We have begged the ANC government in this province. They are in government. They cannot tell us that it's, we, we must not be pointing out their weaknesses. What else are we supposed Nobody to be doing? They've that. had 21 <laughs> years to govern Nobody and govern that. progressively, and they've not done that. What they have done was to empower already empowered women the women who are empowered economically are not women who were necessarily in the doldrums of poverty. Yes, you can bring one out uh, here and, and there, interview them and put them in a publication and say we've empowered this woman. She's one out of how many? So what we are saying is simply, it's not true that the ANC cares about the plight of women. If they cared about the plight of women, by now they would have had a policy to deal with the problem of shack fires. Urbanization put aside, in any event that urbanization problem emanates from bad economic policy on a macro and micro level. You cannot centralize an economy. You have to localize it, you have to socialize it, and spread it out I, so I that provinces agree. like Gauteng are not, not burdened with the need for people to come here and look for jobs. I think we've uh, like sort of outlined um, I mean, I mean the, 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 the problems, how they manifest themselves, yes. who is doing or not doing um, what. I want us to try and throw it forward just a little bit. I want to start with you, Rafil, and say, what for you um, are the hopes and aspirations of especially young women, and how do we address them? And if you were to, the three of you were to work together and form part of a team that has to address um, um, those challenges, how would you go about doing those? Okay. I think one is access to education. There should be equal access to education everywhere and improve the quality of the education that you're actually giving to women and boys. Then you need to make sure that there is funding for children post high school to get higher education. And we've put our proposals through and said to the ANC government, this is how you can actually create more funding and then give capital for children when, or for post um, tertiary institution to say, if you want to become an entrepreneur, this is how you go about it. Those are some of the key things that need to be done, including the fact that we need to actually unbundle ESCOM so that we create other power manufacturers, such as looking into green energy. And that will actually encourage energy producers within small facets versus working with one big monopoly like ESCOM to create energy for a whole country. Okay. 
Uh, first of all, the ANC is the only organization that I know of um, that has a policy about uh, gender parity in its um, 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 structures, whether you are going to deploy people in parliament or you are going to have um, an executive committee serving uh, the community or just um, all our structures in the, in the movement. Well, my question was, okay, what I want to for come you in, are the uh, most th pressing this is the reason, challenges? This is the reason. Can I just finish? Now, I just wanted to, to, to make you understand where I'm coming from. First of all, that is a fact. And um, I think I should agree with my colleague here, what my colleague has said. The only thing that I do not understand is that we are raising things that are already there. We need to improve and enhance the quality of education so that the education that we give to our, 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 our learners can be able to allow them not only to be job seekers but also to create employment. And I do believe that that's what we are doing already. However, we need to enhance it so that it can speak to all the economic opportunities that government put in place so that we don't always have to wait to be uh, 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 employees of so and so so that we can then now uh, see economic freedom in our lifetime so I do believe that if we can be able to just come up with modalities that will be able to ensure that we become our own liberators as women and young women in particular we will be able to have uh, an impact in society we will be able to fight patriarchy we will be able to ensure that we create uh, safety commun safe communities in the whole of South Africa. So that's what I believe that we need to, 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 to enhance. But also I, th I think that we also need to enhance what we already have in place, the, the employment equity to ensure that when it speaks about quotas and it sets the uh, percentages in place that we need to account to as institutions of government and private sector, it should also be able to have um, um, a ways in which we would be able to forcefully make sure that what we put in place does become a reality. So I think that um, um, what we need to do as the ANC is to ensure that the policies that we put in place do speak to action and if the action is not done then how do we now enforce it in the institutions of government and private sector so that's what I think the ANC Women's League Young Women Desk and me as a young woman would like to see but lastly again I would like to see oh more in leadership uh, uh, camps of younger women in who are 14 years old and upwards so that they can start understanding who they are, so that they can start de de developing, knowing that they do have role models, knowing that there is a better life, better than what they are used to in their surroundings. Okay. Let's be clear that education is, forms a core part of any empowerment strategy. But let's also be clear that in South Africa, we need to be realistic. We're not going to deal with poverty until, until we deal with this land question. The land question is the bedrock of majority of the economic failures. And it affects women in a very, very profound way. Property is hugely expensive. Property in South Africa has been so commercialized, it's out of reach for those people who need it most. But educating also society, especially men, in terms of uh, issues of uh, sexism and misogyny. And uh, there's a lot that you can do within the curriculum. But most importantly, the free education struggle that we have waged as EFF since the EFF Student Command has been formed is that no registration fees must be paid for the first junior degree, no fees must be paid for the first degree, and no fees must be paid um, by especially children who come from the poor, uh, poorest of the poor families um, yes, for the first doing, degree. The way, it has you. not <laughs> been implemented. NFSAS is not free education, it's a loan. But it and is, it's a very it brutal system. Access, it's a it very brutal system that you education. inherited from the apartheid state. You have not improved it. No, we have. Education we have. We have, we have just now added 4.5 billion to the fund. economic empowerment. And you, did not, you stopped me earlier when I tried to correct her and now you are not stopping her. So is this a biased interview no, it can never be or what? That. And the my point is you that need to learn to understand you. and listen properly. Education is the bedrock and until you offer free education to equalize the life of a young black child, especially a girl, you haven't done anything. You've had 21 years. You've had what 21 you years. Can you, just expand? you have not done anything radical or anything decisive about education in the last you, 21 you, years. You are refusing to, to, to acknowledge NSFAS. So if you are refusing NSFAS to do that, it's okay. NSFAS is not free education. It has improved the lives of people. It has improved my life as it an individual. It has put students into debt. Matter. 
That Thank is why you. we're calling for debt cancellation now for young people. I do believe it that has needs to be addressed. It's a I debt. agree that needs to be addressed, but we cannot lie and say that nothing has been done. It's a debt. That is a lie, and I think a lie told a million it's times a debt. is a lie. It is improving access to education. It is a debt. Whether it's a debt or not, people are able to access education whether and they are <laughs> able to whether improve it's, whether their it, lives. Whether it's debt Therefore, or not, it what doesn't we need matter. to discuss Hence is that the should, for it, economic freedom. should it continue to be Somebody a debt? Thinks that or debt should it now be part of free education? Are, are That's what we need run, to discuss. We've run, we've run out of time. Yes. We've run out of time. Are you probably saying that debt is good for young people? I have never said that. 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 I am okay. saying that is it there, has improved okay. access me, to education. Yeah. Is there anywhere where you believe you could meet with the ANC? Somewhere where you can be able to do things together or for the sake of women? Yes. You know, do stuff together. We are constantly proposing things to the ANC. Rafilwe is my colleague there in the legislature. We are constantly, constantly proposing things. They were trying to ram through a and debt. And you've given up. They, we are not going to give up. <laughs> That's exactly the point. We are not going to give up. There's no ways that we are going to give up. You must remember, this is a generational struggle that we are fighting. There are millions and millions to the tune of 20 million African South African citizens who are living in dire poverty and majority are females. So there's no ways we can give up. And if one person falls, trust me, there's 100,000 more behind that person to take up the baton. I think it's giving up is not an option, is it? Definitely not. So I agree with Mandy in terms of there is no way we're going to give up. I don't necessarily believe working together is an option, but I need the ANC needs to start learning to listen. I mean, there's things called motion. When we table that, Manisa talked about shack fires. We proposed a, fi um, a shack fire replacement material. ANC voted it out because they, they used their majority. And that was to actually help the poorest of the poor, especially women. And we believe that ANC, I want to actually commend Balek Ambeta for actually allowing us to table a motion of no confidence against the president this time. Marupi? Quickly, uh, very, quickly, very quickly. In short, the fact that they are opposition and we are in government together, although we are the government of the NC, I do believe that it means that we are working together somehow. Uh, we cannot, as the ANC, just allow each and everything, even if we don't believe that it is for the best interest of the people, just for the sake of saying we must work together. However, on issues that are of mutual interest and that are going to improve the lives of the people that we say we are saving, I do not see how we can ever say that we cannot work with any political party. Very, very briefly, 10 seconds each. Will the election of a woman president help solve South Africa's problems, women's problems yes. in particular? You know, the, the fact that you, you have a woman as a president would be the most progressive thing ever. But at the moment, as we stand, the ANC's discussion on a woman's pr president, they don't have a caliber of a person that we believe could be an effective we female president in their ranks. I do believe that we, ANC has always had, since 1912, uh, women that have got leadership qualities, that have got leadership skills. Hence, we are celebrating 60 years today of the march that assisted South Africa to be where it is today. So because of that, I do believe that we have capable women, including myself, uh, to lead the country and Hands ensure up. that South Africa can go forward. Afila? I believe that we need to elect a competent president who will resolve South Africa's challenges and somebody who is going to be able to make the tough decisions and make sure those tough decisions are implemented in order to get South Africa out of the mess that it's in and get the economy going and grow jobs and improve the lives of all South Africans, especially women thank and our girls. children. Ladies, thank you very much thank for being you part for of having this us. discussion. One hopes that it will take our country somewhere. Well, that's where we're going to end it for this evening. Do join us again tomorrow evening, same time. Good night.